All right, a 50 kilogram woman stands on a scale in a stationary elevator. What does the scale read? So this doesn't necessarily have to do with friction, but we just covered gravity as well, if you recall. So, but it does deal with normal force, as we'll see. So, got this elevator. At the bottom, we have a scale, and a woman is standing on it. So, in this case, we should know something about gravity as well. When we talk about an object's weight, we're talking about the force due to gravity. So, but we can simplify this quite a bit at the surface of the Earth. So instead of saying that this lady's weight equals g m1 m2 over r squared, so we simplify it. We take her mass, let's say, and all the rest of this, if you're on the surface of the Earth, this would be the mass of the Earth, and this would be the radius of the Earth. And as long as you're even not necessarily on the surface, but at least close to the surface, not too far in the air, so that would still roughly be approximately the radius of the Earth, and these are all constants at that point. So, and we say that the weight would equal mg, where all of these constants when you're at the surface of the Earth equal 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so if weight here is a force, it's mass times acceleration, what units does weight actually have? Newtons. Newtons, not, not kilograms. So in this case, mass is in kilograms, but weight is in newtons. Notice in our vernacular here, we use those words interchangeably, mass and weight. And, you know, in fact, in chemistry, it talk about, hey, go, go weigh. So 10 grams of that substance, and we even use it that way. So, but in physics, we need to make a clear line here versus weight and mass. Weight is in newtons, mass is in kilograms. Keep that in mind. All right, so in problem number two, 50 kilogram woman. What did I tell you about the woman? I gave you her mass. mass. So, in this case, stands on a scale in a stationary elevator. What does stationary mean? Yes. Not moving. So, no st not moving at all, which means good, means that there's no acceleration. It also means there's no velocity either in this case. But the big one was no overall acceleration. We'll find out from Newton's second law, if there's no overall acceleration, then there's no net force either. So we call that a condition of equilibrium. So in this case, the question is, what does this scale read? And so I want this scale to read her weight, which means this scale is going to be in units of? Newtons. And so if this elevator is not moving, how do I get her weight that it would read? Yeah, mass times gravity. So in this case, we'll take her 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And somebody want to get me her weight? Awesome. Cool, and that is indeed what that scale would read, 490 newtons. What is the scale really reading here? 50 or less. <laughs> no, no, I mean, but I mean, what force is it really reading? Because here, gravity. it's reading gravity, but in this case, the scale is also applying a force to her. What force is the scale applying to her? Norm. Normal force. So the scale reads normal force. And in this case, the normal force is equal to her weight. And that's why we just solved for her weight and got the normal force. That's not always going to be the case. If this lovely elevator, it turns out, does not have an acceleration of zero, her weight and the normal force, what the scale reads, are not necessarily going to be equal. So let's look at question number three. Number three says, 50 kilogram woman stands on a scale in an elevator moving downward with a constant velocity of one meter per second. So now, let's take this off for a second. So our velocity is now one meter per second. Still no acceleration though, right? So there's no net force acting on this thing again. So a big thing though, no acceleration. <clears throat> in this case, what does the scale read? Well, this is still a situation where this thing is in equilibrium. Equilibrium means one of two things. A static equilibrium means no motion whatsoever. A dynamic equilibrium means moving at constant velocity. The phrase constant velocity, super important. Dead giveaway, oh, if they say constant velocity means acceleration is zero, net force is zero, and we're in dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so in this case, if we were to actually uh, look at the sum of our forces, sum of the forces equals ma. This is whose who's second log in? Newton's, great. What forces are acting on this woman? We got the normal force acting up on her, which 
And then what's pulling down on her? The normal. Uh, sorry, gravity. Gravity. So in this case, we'll call that her weight. And in this case, we could look at this. And again, which one of these is what the scale reads? Normal. normal force. It always reads normal force. I mean, these might be equal, but it always reads normal force. That's the scale reads. So in this case, we could say, I'm going to call the force that points up positive and the force, her weight, that points down negative. And in this case, it adds up to ma. But what's our acceleration? Zero. zero. So in this case, it really adds up to oh, wait. zero. So in this case, if our net acceleration is zero, then ma is zero. And so typically, these are the two types of problems you have. If you're at equilibrium, the sum of the forces add up to zero. If you're not at equilibrium, they just add up to still plain old ma. Cool, but this adds up to zero. What does that imply about these two forces? They're exactly equal. So I didn't explain this out in the first example, so, but I wanted to show you that when something's going, undergoing constant velocity, it is still true. This scale is still going to read 490 newtons. That has not changed when we're moving at constant velocity. So if you notice, do you always feel like your normal weight in an elevator? No. no. When would you feel maybe lighter than your normal weight? We can't say going up or going down either way. Because this lady, what, way, what direction was her elevator going? Uh, it was going down, and she felt the same weight. So you can't just say going up or going down, because that refers to velocity, but it's all about acceleration. So typically, let's say you're going up in an elevator. You're at the bottom floor, and you're going to go up in the elevator. And let's say you're going to the top of the Empire State Building. Do you accelerate all the way up? No, you initially get to some cruising velocity, and then you just cruise the rest of the way up. As long as you're cruising at constant velocity, you'll feel your normal weight. But it's just that first point where you're accelerating. So and as long as you're accelerating upwards, do you feel heavier or lighter? You feel heavier. So let's say now we're getting towards the top floor, and now we've got to slow down and come to a stop. And so in this case, which direction does your velocity point as you're coming to a stop at the top? Velocity. Still up. So, but your velocity is slowing down, so what direction does your acceleration point? Down. And when you have a downward acceleration in your elevator, you're going to feel lighter. And just as it's stopping, you do feel lighter there. Sweet. As you're going back down then, now you're going to ride the elevator back down. As it gets to its cruising velocity going downward, what kind of acceleration did you have during that period? Downward. And so you feel lighter, like the floor is dropping out from under you a little bit and stuff like that. Exactly. But once you hit cruising velocity, you feel your normal weight again. So, but once you reach the bottom floor and this thing comes to a stop, you feel heavier again and your acceleration points up. So as long as the acceleration points up, and I don't care if that means you're speeding up to get to cruising velocity or you're coming to a stop as you go down, if your acceleration points up, you feel heavier. If your acceleration points down, you feel lighter. Let's see why that is. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So when you're going down a hill or going down a roller coaster or something like that, and you feel lighter, same kind of thing. So if we look at question number four. Same kind of thing. We've got a 50 kilogram woman standing on a scale in an elevator. This time it's accelerating downward two meters per second squared. So now we have a net acceleration. And so in this case, again, sum of the forces equals ma. We always start, always start there. But is acceleration 0? No. So in this case, it's 2 meters per second squared downward. And so in this case, I'm set up my sum of the forces. I've got a normal force that points up still, and a weight that points down. And I defined something that pointed up as being positive and something that pointed down as being negative, then I better remember that when I set this acceleration up. So because in this case, that acceleration points down. down, so it's negative. So when I plug a number in here, I'm not just plugging in 2, I'm going to plug in negative 2. Some people just tell you put the negative out here. I like applying it right to the variable itself. Uh, same diff either way. Uh, you know what, actually, let's just put it out front. We'll call it negative ma, and we'll just plug in 2, the absolute value there. So uh, when I do it here, yeah. 
So I'm already accounting for the fact that it points down here as well. So actually, I'm gonna, I'll take, you know, I'll just blank it. I'm gonna take the convention of taking care of the signs here, then in the variables themselves. Cool. So in this case, normal force equals negative ma plus the weight. If I move that to the other side, because again, I'm solving for normal force because that's what the scale reads. And so in this case, negative 50 kilograms times two meters per second squared. And what's weight again? Yeah, we already solved that was 490 newtons is her weight. And so what do we get for the overall normal force here? Good, 390 newtons. So in this case, does she feel heavier or lighter than her normal weight? She feels lighter, and should she? Yeah, we're accelerating downwards, she should feel lighter. Oh, I went back and decided to put it in right here instead. So, and just make the entire term negative instead. So, and you can, you can account for it in either place. You just gotta be careful. And the problem is, is notice, I took the convention here that I'm gonna account for the negative as a sign in front of the force, which means I need to do it here as well. I was just trying to be consistent. So you can go either way. If you wanna make sure up is always positive and down is always negative, then when you plug in your accelerations, you could plug them in yourself instead of having to put in the sign right there. So but you'll sign most physics professors as well as textbooks kind of use this convention as well.